Good morning, good morning. Sorry, we're about a minute late. We're having some streaming difficulties. Uh, great to have you on. Great to see you here today. We are at the last Sunday of February. Can you believe that? It is unbelievable. So many unbelievable things happening in our time uh, here in this last year or actually a little more than a year. But uh, one unbelievable thing is, is um, my father, we just celebrated his 70th birthday. Can't believe he's 70. 70 is the new 50. So it is uh, exciting to celebrate with them. That's why we have this background. We're here at their place and celebrating uh, over this weekend has been great and fun. And so happy birthday to my father, 70 years old, uh, two days ago. So um Looking forward to today. Wanted to look at um, the word today. We're going to um, maybe have a, a worship time uh, later in the week, a worship night, kind of prayer worship. So just going to jump right into the word today. Um, hopefully it's impacting to you. Uh, one thing I want to remind you is grab a notebook. Uh, I have an actual hard copy notebook. You can also use your phone to take notes. Um, also, whether it's your phone or an actual Bible, grab a Bible because you know God wants to speak to you today. We don't just do church um, so that I can speak to you. We do church because God wants to meet with us and we want to meet with him and we want to meet with each other. And obviously, we're not in the same room uh, in these times of COVID and uh, social distancing, but we can be in the same heart and connected to the same God, obviously. God is one. He's three in one. He's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so we are together joining in, in pursuing God, hearing from Him. I just pray right now, God, that you'd open up our ears to hear. Lord, you'd open up our minds. God, not to just think our thoughts, but to think your thoughts. Your word says that your thoughts are so much higher than ours. So I pray, God, that we would think and hear from you and that we would just be able to apply it to our heart and our life, God, that we would walk things out that we hear you speak. We want to be obedient to you, not just hear the word, as the word says, but be doers and be obedient to your commands. And so... We just honor you today, God. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to just take a moment to uh, receive our tithes and offerings before we jump into the word. So, of course, we always look at our scripture here. Matthew 6, 19 through 21 says, Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. And our prayer today is, Lord, help me get my priorities in order. I desire to store up treasure that will last forever in heaven. Today we align our treasure with you so that our heart's desire will be with you and your great purpose for our life. And then, of course, if you're giving, you can give online. It's a safe um, and secure way to give uh, a lot online at alivechurchnyc.com slash give. And then also, if you'd prefer, you can mail in your tithes, your offerings, your faith harvest, however uh, you are giving today. And you can request our mailing address if you need that by emailing us at connectedalivechurchnyc.com. And then before we get into the word, if you would like to share uh, this uh, this time together with any of your friends, it's a great time to just click share, send it to somebody, or even after we are done live, you can send the video. We also will be posting on uh, YouTube after after we're done here on, on Facebook, we'll be posting it to YouTube, so you can send them that link and you can... Um, make comments, you can hit thumbs up, you can do double whoop hands, uh, you can interact today because I think the more we engage with the word, the more it sinks in and the more it comes alive to us. And so, Lord, just speak to us today. Amen. Amen. We're continuing on our 
a series we started uh, this month on called Relating. Relating. Obviously, February is one of those famous months for talking about relationships and um, talking about love and everything. We've been talking about relating to God because relating to Him affects all of our other relationships in our life. Relating to our Father, God, who created us, who breathed life into us, who gave us a purpose and a destiny, who has called us out of darkness into light, and who has called you, even if you don't know Him, to be close to Him. The reason we want to know how to know God is because if we don't know Him, we can't obey Him. And if we don't obey Him, He doesn't recognize us. I, I always think of the scripture um, and it's a little bit scary, the scripture that people came and said, God, but we we did all these things in your name, Lord. They said, Lord, Lord, we did all these things in your name. We healed the sick. We opened the blind eyes. We did work for you. And he says, but the reality is I, I didn't know you. Depart from me. What a heart-wrenching idea it would be to do a lot for the Lord but never know him. You know, God was a friend with Abraham. He was a friend with Noah. He was a friend with Moses. He was a friend with the patriarchs of our faith. He talked to them face to face. They heard his voice and they did as well as they could humanly possible to obey his word. And so that's our call today is to obey his word, obey what he tells us, listen to his voice, know his voice. It's hard sometimes to know what his voice is in a loud and chaotic society. But this right here, his word has been written to us. And so we can't say God doesn't speak today if we're keeping this book closed. If we're looking at this book and we're reading, God's going to speak to you. He's going to um, open up your eyes to see, your ears to hear. And he's going to help you know his voice because his sheep know his voice and so we want to know his voice we want to be friends with him we want to know that he is not only our god and lord and savior but he's our friend i'm going to grab my notes here i forgot to put them up here i trust the old uh ipad here it is an old one it's like i don't know how old it is it can't even update anymore but it works for what we're doing today that's how technological uh, advanced I am. Technologically. See, I can't even say it. Anyways, moving to relating to God. This is our um, message today is relating. I'll show you that again. Relating. And then you can put there to God if you're taking notes. We've been talking about how relating to God causes us to become better sons, daughters, husbands, wives. We talked about that last week. How it creates us to be better friends to people because we are learning how God is loving us and we're able to then show the love of God to others. And it's it, it's a it's a love that is pure. It's a love that is kind. It's a love that's not boastful. It's a love, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, if you take time to read that, it's called the love chapter. And the Bible says in James that God is love. And so when you read 1 Corinthians 13, you realize that is God's attributes. That's some of his attributes that he shows to us in how he loves us. And so I encourage you to read that, 1 Corinthians 13. But today we want to talk about some different levels of your relationship with God. You can go from glory to glory, precept upon precept. There's different levels in our human natural relationships. If you're pursuing a, a, um, a husband or a wife, uh, for your future, there's different levels that you that you step to before you just dive right into to marriage, or at least you should. That the proper way is to uh, be a friend first, and and then go into a, a courting, dating type relationship. And you're like courting? That's like the 1900s. Well, you know, I think we need to go back to some of the basics of how things were built, so we can. Um, realize that it's not all about physical contact or how what you can get out of a relationship. See, God has a way to do things. And so there's levels that you grow, levels that you step to before you're fully committed 
in a marriage relationship. And um, and similarly, it's a little bit different because God is so much bigger than even a marriage relationship. God is fulfilling in every area of our life. He is our friend, our brother, our master, our savior. We're going to look at that a little bit today. How we can go to another level in our relationship with God. If you're with me here today and you want to go to another relationship, another level in your relationship, it's not, not another relationship, that, that's for another time. If you want to go to another level in your relationship with God, just double whoop hands in the comments or say amen right where you are if you do, can't um, select emojis right now. But I want to want to talk about the different levels of relationships that we can have with God. Because there's different levels. Uh, and the deeper we allow our relationship to go, the more positive effect that it has on all of our earthly relationships. We've hit that point many times. Is that the level of relationship, the closeness we have with God, affects how we relate to other people. We can show the love of God better if we know what the love of God is by being close to Him and being in a relationship with Him. We don't know Him if we don't spend time with Him. The first level that we all enter into uh, with God in most cases because the salvation moment happens and we realize that um, that we're sinners and we want to be saved, going to a relationship level is a sort of a master servant relationship and you say well that doesn't sound very cool well it is because it's what we're designed to do is do what our our creator has designed us to do john 12 26 says if anyone serves me let him follow me and where i am there my servant will be also if anyone serves me him my father will honor. That's Jesus talking to his followers. You want to serve him, you got to serve him. If you want to be where he's at, you got to follow him. You got to uh, be a servant in your heart towards God. And so this this level, this kind of entry level, if you would, um, level of relationship with God is where um, our, our, our service to the Lord can maybe um, be a little bit more out of duty, realizing that, okay, I, I'm now a servant of the Most High God. I'm going to do what He asked me to do. And there's, there's, there, you're kind of growing towards that friendship relationship, but it's master-servant, and you're just trying to learn what is going to please God. What kind of life do I need to lead to please God? What kind of choices do I need to make to please God? And this is not a uh, just an entry level relationship. This is a along the way. We always need to be thinking, what what does God's word say? How should I be living? How should I be doing these things that I sense God wants me to do and that I'm reading in his word that he wants me to do? So our our master servant relationship can kind of feel like a a task list or doing it out of uh, a duty at some times. But the reason why we want to keep this level of a relationship um, growing is because God expects obedience to his commands. He doesn't just say things to be a good idea. Hey, here's a good idea. It might help you make better choices. No, he says this will lead to a better life. This will lead to life. This will lead to my blessing. There's people who make decisions and they get stuck where they're at thinking, why can't can't things just change? And, and the reality is, is you've made a decision that leads to a certain consequence. And so if we're living a, a servant master relationship with God, we want to hear his voice, know his commands and obey them. He expects also humble service. So we're not prideful. We don't we don't say, wow, uh, God has blessed me more than you. We're, we're humble in our service to him. And then he will ultimately hold us accountable for what he places into our hands. We read the story in the Bible about the master and the servants with the talents. The master gave them the talents and then came back and held them accountable and expected them to use what he had given them. So there's 
there's this master servant relationship. It's not just all uh, feel good. Uh, Jesus loves me and that's it. It's a, he does love you. And I'm not taking anything away from that. But I'm saying is we need to be responsive in an obedient way to the commands of God. That's hard to do in a world that says, do what you want. Do what your heart tells you. The Bible tells us that our heart harbors all sorts of evil. So we got to be able to decipher, uh, maybe I shouldn't do what my heart's telling me to do in this scenario. Maybe God's leading me this other way. The second level of a growing relationship with God and relating to Him in our life is like a, um, like a child father, son, daughter to a father. Galatians um, 4, 6 through 7 says this, And because you are sons, and newer um, translations say not just sons, but because you are sons and daughters, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. As are, wait, sorry. And if a son, then you are an heir of God through Christ. Wow, we, we have so much, so much of inheritance available to us because God wants to be our father and he is our father but he wants to relate to us as a son and daughter. This is a, a step closer to God. So we get saved, we sense we're like master, uh, servant, and then going to another level, developing a child-father relationship. And I realize this can be a hard step for many people who don't have a quality or good or close relationship with your earthly father or parents because... That's kind of the the perspective you have of like, well, how do you get, how do you have a father, son, father daughter relationship that's not uh, hurtful, that's not um, hard to deal with, and so we have to put aside sometimes we have to put aside our experience and lean into the Word of God. Says this will be a healthier relationship with God and we need to obey and step into these kind of relationships. Again, it's not easy to do. But we need to grow and 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 hear from others how they relate to God as father, not just as master. This is a close relationship. We realize that we are more than servants and we've been adopted as sons and daughters with God our loving father. And the reason he wants this type of relationship is number one, he wants to provide guidance and direction for us. How many of you, if you have that kind of relationship with your dad, have received some sort of guidance and direction at times? It might feel a little bit like it, it kind of rubs you the wrong way or like, ah, oh, that's not what I want to do. But, but man, that's really, that's really a, a wise concept that you shared with me. And so sometimes we hear that and we, we don't always initially love what we hear, but then we realize that is the best way. God wants to provide also our natural and spiritual needs, just like a father would. A father, the Bible says, a, a, a good earthly father wouldn't just give you a stone if you asked for bread or give you a scorpion if you asked for an egg. No, even an earthly father would give you bread if he could provide bread or egg if he could provide an egg. And so, God is so much more even greater than that. He wants to provide for you. That's why we even do things like tithing because we're recognizing that God owns everything, that God is in control of everything. That's why we do things like faith harvest because we want to show thanks to God. We want to pour out our heart to him. And one of the ways we do that is by sowing our our earned money into his kingdom and saying, God, I put you first and everything. And you've been so good to me. I know you're going to cover me through it all. Cause he's a father. He's a, he's not just a master friend, <coughs> excuse me, but he is a father. He also will faithfully discipline us when we need it. And how many times has the hand of God felt a little tough at times, but tough love produces perseverance. He wants to show us the right way to life and discipline is his way 
of showing love. He doesn't leave us neglected on the side and say, oh, you figure it out. No, the word says it. He disciplines those he loves. Excuse me. He will be faithful to discipline us when we need it. The key for us is to respond and to draw closer to him as he's disciplining us and not run further away. Number four of a father-son, kind of daughter, father-daughter relationship is he wants to give us a great inheritance. There's a great inheritance laid up for us. And if we are close to him, we receive all that he has in store for us to inherit. We already inherit a great thing when we receive salvation, but he's even got more and more and more. Another way uh, we can grow in our relationship with God is going to a brother-brother relationship. And that sounds kind of funny after you say, well, he's our father, he's our master, a brother-brother. Well, here in Hebrews 2.11, it says this, For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brothers. I want to read another um, from Proverbs 18.24, another scripture. You can turn there if you want. Proverbs 18.24. And it says this. <clears throat> Excuse me. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Speaking of Jesus. And then Matthew 12, 49 through 50. Matthew 12, 49 through 50 says this. And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So there's this brother-brother relationship. It's like, it's a progressive relationship where Jesus wants to be kind of our big brother. What do big brothers do? They're, they're right by your side when you need it the most. And in hard times, when, when people are coming at you, your big brother usually steps in and says, Hey, stop, stop messing with my younger brother or sister. Stop. You know, you're going to have to deal with me if you're, if you're, de if you're trying to, to do anything to them. And so Jesus steps in as this protector, this I'm by your side. I want to be standing with you. He wants to stand with us through our battles. He doesn't want us going through things alone. He wants to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And so that's another level of relationship, realizing we can trust that he has our best interest in mind. Even though God has to discipline us at times, then we realize, wow, he has my best interest in mind. He's also my brother. He's also my friend. A friend-to-friend -friend relationship is the next one. John 15, 15 says this, no longer do I call you just servants. For a servant does not know his master, what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. Wow. He's made known to us everything from God. The word is a huge revelation of what God is saying. And so get into the word. Try to understand it. Get it with other friends and, and study it. Go over things. Go over scriptures. D dive deeper into them. And if you don't know how, ask. Send us an email. We'll send you some resources of how you can study the Bible a little bit deeper. But a friend-to-friend -friend relationship is a kind of relationship that Abraham had with God. God spoke to Abraham clearly. He led him. He talked with him, walked with him. <clears throat> led him step by step. He wants to prove and demonstrate his loyalty to us through his friendship with us. He wants to encourage and lift us up. You know, ever have one of those friends that is constantly encouraging you? If you don't have one of those friends, then be one of those friends. And let me tell you, then your friends will start to encourage you if they're the right kind of friends. If not, maybe you need to find another friend. He wants to share his secrets with us. You ever have one of those friends 
that just tells you everything and, and <clears throat> doesn't always tell someone else, but they tell they feel comfortable telling you everything. He wants to sharpen us and make us better than we are now. He wants to have his heart knit together with our heart. The Bible says, Can two walk together unless they agree with one another? Our goal is to find the heart of God, agree with Him, and walk together with Him. And then the final one for today is like a marriage relationship, a husband and wife relationship. The Bible calls Jesus our husband and the church his bride. And He would do anything for His bride. He would give up Himself. He would protect. He would... He would provide and He does all these things. He wants to remind us through this kind of relationship that He will never leave us or forsake us. It's that kind of a bond. It's that kind of a commitment. That kind of a covenant. He wants to prove that He will never leave us, never forsake us, and He will stand with us no matter what. He wants to walk hand in hand with us down the path of life. That's a picture of a couple who's who's walking hand in hand, walking down down the different paths of life that come their way and just holding on to God, holding on to each other and realizing, hey, we're in this together. That's the kind of relationship God offers us to grow into, is to realize he's got us taken care of. He wants to have intimate communion with us. He wants to be close to us. He wants to know us inside and out. He wants to know our heart, our dreams, our desires. He wants us to lay them before him and he wants to he wants to just speak with you through his word. And he wants to be joined with us for all eternity. He the word talks about him wanting to have a relationship with us forever. That's a long time and God wants that with you no matter what the flaws are, no matter what uh, you've been through. He wants to know you forever. So he offers himself to us to say, you can know me forever because I want to know you forever. So I died for you. I went to the cross. I, I was beaten. I was bruised for your transgressions. I, I came when you needed me the most because you didn't have a way out. And I came and gave you a way out of sin and death. And I've given you life and life more abundantly. That's what he's done for us. And so we can grow in our relationship with him. We don't have to stay where we're at. And it's not always a task-oriented thing. It's a drawing near to him thing. Sometimes it does feel task-oriented. Sometimes it does feel like we're the, the, the servant master kind of um, in, in that kind of mindset. But man, we break through to the next level and we begin to get closer and closer to God. And there is such a reward such a closest. He is our reward, the Bible says. God is our reward. We're, we're searching after so many different things sometimes to try to find the reward in this life. Well, God is our reward. Drawing close to Him. Being near Him. And He will direct your paths. He will take care of you. He will never leave you, never forsake you. He will provide when things look like they're running out. He will be your God, your Father, your friend, your Master, your Savior, your brother. He is all in all and He wants to draw you close to Him. I think today we can ask ourselves a couple questions and then we'll close. One, you can write this down if you're taking notes so you can <clears throat> maybe in your devotion time or your prayer time or your, you know drawing near time to the Lord, you can ask the Lord even some of these questions. But I want you to write these down. How is your personal relationship with the Lord? Which level would you say you're maybe at? And that's not a uh, intellectual kind of, oh, I got to figure this out. No, just where's your heart at? Where is your heart saying your level of closeness is with the Lord? Another question you can ask yourself that you can write down is, are you relating to him as a servant who serves of the Lord or out of a sense of duty? Another question is, is your relationship with the Lord progressing? Is it progressing? Now, I'm not talking about you have a couple you know, bad days where you miss devotions. Like, Are you progressing in your closeness with God? Are you trusting in Him 
no matter what comes your way? Are you digging deeper into knowing the love of God for your for for yourself so you can show that to others? Is it progressing? And again, these aren't condemning questions at all. It's just be honest. Be honest with God. Lay this before him. God, I feel like I haven't progressed with you. I even wrote that in a journal the other day. Like, God, I feel like in some areas I've stopped growing. Show me how to grow as a man, as a husband, as a father. These are honest conversations we need to be having with God because sometimes we hit a wall. You feel like, man, I've stopped growing. I've stopped kind of, you know, developing in these areas and I, I, I want to grow, God. And so we ask God, how can I progress? How can I grow? Is your relationship with the Lord getting better as the years go by? You can write that down. And I realize there's some years are tougher and harder than other years. But are you allowing that tough year to draw you closer to God and, and to learn and glean? Or are you allowing it to draw you further from Him? Again, these aren't condemning questions. I want to remind you, it's just heart to heart with God. This is part of what gets you to the next level is that you're not performing to get God's favor, you're realizing I need to get close to him to know his heart, to know his love, because I want to obey him and be his for all eternity. And the last question I put before you is, is your current relationship to the Lord um, life-giving to others around you? Is your current relationship to the Lord life-giving to others around you? Or is it a I keep it to myself. I'm kind of like the man on the mountain. I have my connection with God up on the mountain and then I come down and it doesn't bless anybody. That's not what we want to do as believers. We want our relationship with God to be a blessing to others around us. And so we grow step by step, day by day. We we grow precept upon precept, glory to glory. It's a It's a incremental progressive kind of thing it doesn't always change overnight although we can have a relationship or a revelation in our relationship with God overnight that that kind of catapults us into the next level but it's a day by day step by step leaning on him no matter what we go through no, no matter what decisions we make David was a great example of when he messed up he fessed up and he went to God that'd be a great t-shirt when you mess up Fess up and go to God. Don't, don't hide from Him. Don't run from Him. Draw near to Him. Seek His presence. Amen? Amen. Well, I want to pray for you today and then um, ask if anyone would like to start a relationship with God and realize that He died on the cross. He rose from the dead to give us eternal life. He died for your sins, and we're going to give you that opportunity today. But uh, I want to pray for everyone watching today that we would draw closer to him. God, we just present ourselves to you, God. As children of God, we ask that we would have a revelation that we can draw closer to you. That you're not just our master. You're not just our savior, although those are enough. Because you are a good master and you're a great savior. But you're a father. You're a friend. You're a brother. You're even a husband. God, you're, you're, you want to be close to us. And so we want to be close to you. We want to obey your commands. We want to know you, God. We want to be one of those believers that people know us because they know us how we're loving one another. They know, they know that we obey your commands and that, that our life is leading towards what you have promised us as an inheritance. God, I pray that you would touch each person's heart. God, if they've been hurt in relationships, if they've been hurt in earthly relationships, even if they've been hurt in, in churches or in relationships with leaders, God, we pray that you would show them, God, that you are not a God who desires to hurt them. You want to restore them. You want to bless them. You want to cover them. You want to give them the good things that you've prepared for them. God, let us be those that pursue you with a right heart, with a right attitude, saying, God, we want to grow in you. 
We don't want to stay stagnant where we're at. No matter how many years we've followed you or known you, we want to progress in our relationship with you. And then if you're watching today and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's a great place to start. And so if you would like to say, hey, I want... I want that relationship with God, my creator. I want that relationship with Jesus. I want to I want to I want forgiveness of my sins. I don't want to carry the weight of my sin anymore. There's good news. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He took the blame, he took the beating. He took your sin upon his shoulders. He went to the cross, died for your sins, shed his blood for your sins went to the grave, and three days later he rose from the dead that he could come back and say, hey, there's eternal life for you. And that offer is for you today. That there's eternal life for you. There's salvation for you. There's hope. doesn't mean life will be perfect, but you'll be able to lean on the one who knows perfect peace. And so if you want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you want to make that decision today, you can. And this is the first step in many to come. Salvation is free. Following Jesus takes discipleship and learning is what discipleship is. Learning and growing. So if you want to make that decision today, just say this prayer because the Bible says if we believe in our heart. So if you're believing in your heart right now that Jesus really did this for you. And then if you confess with your mouth, the Bible says you will be saved. And so we want to confess today. Dear Lord, say, just repeat after me. Dear Lord. I realize I'm a sinner. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I repent of my sin and I turn to you. Jesus, I believe that you came and you died and you rose again so that my sins could be forgiven, so that I could have eternal life and grow in a relationship with you. I give you my life today. All I am is yours. Show me the right way to live. I want to love you, obey you, and follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. If you prayed that prayer today, let us know. Email us at connectedalivechurchnyc.com. We'd love to get you some more resources to help you in your next step as, as a brand new believer, follower of Jesus. And uh, we'd love to pray with you. And also, if you are a part of the church already or you have known Christ a long time, we want to pray with you, uh, hear your testimonies. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Connect at AliveChurchNYC.com or message us through Facebook or Instagram, however um, you are able to. We would love to hear from you. So once again, God bless you. Have a great and wonderful rest of your Sunday, and we'll see you next Sunday.